What's up y'all, welcome back to another video. My name is Miles out of Dallas, Texas, and I feel like this video that I'm about to make is so needed right now because so many people are looking to live in an RV full time and more than ever it seems like. I have been in this industry selling RVs for about three years now and I could say when I first started, probably only around 20% of people that I dealt with on a day-to-day -day basis were looking to live in an RV full time. I feel like that is now switched and it feels like probably about 80% of the people I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis are looking to live in an RV full time. And there are lots of videos on the internet about what living in an RV full time looks like from the perspective of somebody that has done that and is currently doing that. And there's a lot that you can learn from those videos and I definitely encourage you to go watch them. I'm going to come at this from a different perspective of more so what the buying process looks like in getting into an RV full time and what the options look like that are out here that you can live in full time in an RV. So a lot of the videos you'll see online of people that live in RVs full time, it's awesome because you get to see the RV they live in full time. But as you can see behind me, I mean, we're walking by tons of RVs and there's so many different options of RVs that you can live in and there's so many different questions that I know you probably have such as, you know, what the financing looks like for an RV and what it, you know, the pricing differences look like for an RV. And then things like where you're gonna put the RV and how much that costs and then what is service like after you buy the RV and how does the service structure look like if your RV is now your home and this is what you're living out of. So we're gonna talk about so many of these different things here. Before we get started, I do wanna talk about how I am no certified RV expert. I'm just someone that comes out here every day and you know is in these RVs and my family has had seven RVs over the past 15 years, but I still am learning stuff all the time and there's still so much for me to learn. Some of you that watch this have had RVs for over 20 years. So there's a lot of value out there and I wanna say that I do my best to be as accurate as possible in the information I put out, but I do not know everything. So if I miss something or misspeak on something or you have some piece of information related to what we're talking about, add it down below in the comments to help the people that are watching and give them that added bit of information that I may not have touched on or that you could maybe elaborate further on. So if you have any advice to people looking to live in RVs full time or any information you know that I may not know, that is what the comment section is for down below. So let's increase the amount of information given down there and that's pretty much everything I got. So let's get into this video. All right, y'all, so there is a lot to talk about. Here are the topics that are gonna be discussed in this video. First of all, we're gonna talk about the different types of RVs because there are a lot of different types of RVs out there. Then we're gonna talk about additional accessories you may need with your RV, purchasing and financing information for what it looks like to actually purchase an RV and a lot of questions that come up along with that. And then where will you put the RV and what are the costs for where you'll put the RV? We're gonna take a look at that transporting the RV, whether it's gonna be you transporting it yourself or a transportation company, and then service and expectations and what the service kind of looks like after you have purchased your RV. And then finally, we're gonna look through some popular floor plans that are out there for different RVs. So getting into some of the first types of RVs here, you're gonna have travel trailers, which are what we're looking at here. Travel trailers are gonna come in many different shapes and sizes and well, I shouldn't say shapes maybe, but definitely different sizes. A lot of them are shaped pretty similarly. And you're gonna have aluminum sided and fiberglass sided travel trailers. Then you're gonna have fifth wheels here, which is what we're looking at. And these are going to be much bigger than what a travel trailer is in most instances. But again, these come in all different sizes as well. And all of these come in various different floor plan options, which we'll look at a little bit later. Then you're going to have between your travel trailers, you're gonna have something like this here that is an aluminum sided RV that has wooden framing on it. And then something like this, which is a fiberglass sided RV with aluminum framing on it. So different construction aspects to it. And then, like I said, they come in various different sizes. So this one here is way bigger than the other two that we just looked at. And they come in every shape and size in between. With your fifth wheels, you have mid profile fifth wheels and full profile fifth wheels. This is going to be a mid profile fifth wheel here. You can tell because of the way that the roof slants down into the front cap. And then also if you look down underneath the RV, you're going to see that it is flat all the way underneath. And when we get to the full profile fifth wheels, you'll see the difference here in just a second. 
So that is going to make your storage compartments outside a little bit smaller, your ceiling height in the bedroom a little bit shorter than what it will be in your full profile fifth wheels like what we have here, where you can see the roof goes flat all the way to where that front cap starts. And then you're also gonna have a drop frame construction underneath. So the frame is dropped down lower, which gives you the ability to have bigger storage compartments. It also allows your stabilizer legs on the sides to sit a little bit wider to give you a little bit more stability. And these are usually gonna be more expensive and a little bit more premium than what your mid profile fifth wheels will be. Then you have toy haulers. So this here that we're looking at are all toy haulers. These all also have a full body paint package on them. So that means this is all automotive paint along the outside, no sticker decals like some of the other ones we, uh, some of the other ones that we looked at. This here is going to be one with sticker decals. So that's kind of the difference. But these all have a garage in the back for different toys. We'll take a look at what those look like a little bit more here later on in the video. You also have those with the garage in the back for toys in bumper pull trailers as well, which is what these are. So lots of different towable style RVs. So far, everything we looked at, these are all RVs that can be towed with a vehicle. Then you're going to have your motorhomes. So these are class C motorhomes that we're looking at. There's also class B and class A motorhomes. So these are gonna have the cab overhead. That's a class B van there. These are going to be the smaller size motorhomes. And then you will have your bigger motorhomes that are gonna be either class A or super C motorhomes that are much bigger like this, what we're looking at here. They vary drastically in size and price point. They could be anywhere from the low $100,000 range up into the millions and come in various different styles and types when it comes to these big, really expensive motorhomes. Now there are some that I left out like teardrop trailers and truck campers, but I think for the purpose of living in an RV, something that would be more of an anomaly that people would be looking at to live in potentially. So just know those other options are out there. That brings us to different parts and accessories. You can see all these different parts and accessories here that are things you might need for your RV, things like sewer hoses and water hoses. If you have a travel trailer, you're gonna need something like a weight distribution hitch here, which is gonna stop your RV from swaying. If you're getting a fifth wheel, you're gonna need something like a fifth wheel hitch here, and there's lots of different options for these as well. Most uh, service departments or dealerships are gonna be able to help you out with this stuff just like we would if you came to buy an RV from me, we're gonna help you out with what you need. That's a slider hitch there, so if you have a short bed truck and you need a hitch that slides, you have that. That's a hitch there that will hook up to a ball in the bed of your truck, and there's tons of different options for ways to tow the RV. So those are things that you're gonna need as additional accessories with your RV just to make sure you have a comfortable experience. These are things that are not gonna come with the RV. So in most instances, they will be included in the overall financing package for the RV. And if you are paying cash for the RV, then most of these parts and accessories are usually going to be purchased with cash. There are so many other things you can add to RVs too. Some have prep for a washer dryer and you can get slide toppers to cover your slide outs on the outside of the RV. There's a bunch of different things. So really, whether you're contacting me or a different dealership, you can talk to them about different accessories you may want for the RV as well. Then that gets us into where you will put the RV. So this is a question a lot of people get caught up on where they've never had an RV before maybe, or they're just trying to figure this out. And there's a couple different options. I've seen people do various different things. The easiest and most common thing would be people going to an RV park. So there's RV parks all over the place, all over the country. Here in Dallas, there are a ton that have been popping up and that have been here for a while. And prices on these are typically going to range somewhere around $400 to $1,500 a month if you're trying to stay for a monthly length. Most of these RV parks will also have nightly rates and weekly rates, but from what I've seen based on the experience you want, usually gonna be somewhere around 400 to 1500 a month. So it can vary drastically depending on the experience you want. Um, the most expensive ones that I've seen have things like clubhouses, almost like an apartment complex would have with a swimming pool and things like that, or you could get a more bare bones type of RV park where they just have your electrical and water hookups and you're just on a plot of grass essentially. So various different things, but there's gonna be RV parks all over the country that you can set your RV up at. And if you're looking to RV camp and live in an RV off the grid, you're going to need to think of power a little bit differently because you're going to need either a generator or solar or both to run the entire RV off of solar. Now, if you're in climates that don't require much AC usage and things like that, that will help a lot. But as soon as you need to start powering on an AC or multiple AC units, you're talking about needing a lot of power. So something like a 9,000 watt generator or up 
is going to usually have close to, if not enough, capacity to power a 50 amp RV, something like a big fifth wheel with two ACs on it, and give you the power you need to be able to run most things on the RV. Also, if you're looking at going the solar route, this gets a lot more tricky. And this is where kind of hope to level expectations here a little bit because there are ways to get it where your entire RV can run off of solar and it is a possibility to be able to do that. But it takes a lot of financial investment and a lot of equipment to make this happen. So for instance, like Keystone, if you wanna order a Montana from their factory with solar, that has the capability to run the entire RV off of solar, it's about a $19,000 add-on that you're looking at there from the factory and it has to be special ordered. And then if you're looking at doing it after the fact, so if you found an RV on an RV lot that you like and you want to equip it with the proper solar to run everything on the entire RV, again, you're looking at, in most cases, easily $10,000 plus worth of financial investment to get your RV close to the capability of being able to run the entire RV off of solar. But then there are other things that go into this too, like needing a soft start AC unit and things like that so that the AC doesn't have a higher power draw when you go to turn it on, which a lot of RVs may not come equipped with out of the factory. So there's a lot of different factors that go into running your RV fully off of solar and it is much, much easier to just find an RV park with electrical connections or get a generator as opposed to going the solar route when it comes to the financial investment required to make those things happen. So, But that's up to you and you deciding what you want to do. Most dealerships and definitely my dealership that I'm at has the capability and the equipment here to install solar to get it up to par to run the RV. But like I said, it's going to take a pretty significant financial investment up front to make that happen. And keep in mind, I say all this as well with my limited knowledge of things in this industry. So if y'all have seen videos or seen information out there about more affordable ways to run an entire RV away from an electrical connection, whether it be off a generator or solar, let me know down below in the comments if you've seen some information out there that can be helpful to other people looking to do these things and you know maybe make it more affordable and efficient. Add that down below in the comment section. Ultimately, ultimately, I want this to be a place where everybody can share this information and people can come to and have a whole slew of information here to help making full-time RV living a more comfortable and easy transition with all the information there to make that an easy transition. And again, keep in mind, a lot of these additional accessories like solar, maybe a generator or whatever else you may want for the RV can be included in the financing package of purchasing your RV instead of having to pay completely out of pocket for this additional equipment as well. And if you are paying cash for the RV, then most of these parts and accessories are usually going to be purchased with cash. There are so many other things you can add to RVs too. Some have prep for a washer dryer and you can get slide toppers to cover your slide outs on the outside of the RV. There's a bunch of different things. So really, whether you're contacting me or a different dealership, you can talk to them about different accessories you may want for the RV as well. Then that gets us into where you will put the RV. So this is a question a lot of people get caught up on where they've never had an RV before maybe, or they're just trying to figure this out. And there's a couple different options. I've seen people do various different things. The easiest and most common thing would be people going to an RV park. So there's RV parks all over the place, all over the country. Here in Dallas, there are a ton that have been popping up and that have been here for a while. And prices on these are typically going to range somewhere around $400 to $1,500 a month if you're trying to stay for a monthly length. Most of these RV parks will also have nightly rates and weekly rates, but from what I've seen based on the experience you want, usually gonna be somewhere around 400 to 1500 a month. So it can vary drastically depending on the experience you want. Um, the most expensive ones that I've seen have things like clubhouses, almost like an apartment complex would have with a swimming pool and things like that, or you could get a more bare bones type of RV park where they just have your electrical and water hookups and you're just on a plot of grass essentially. So various different things, but there's gonna be RV parks all over the country that you can set your RV up at. The other route would be if you are purchasing the land, which I've had a lot of customers that are in this situation as well, where maybe you have sold your home and then you're looking to get some land to build the next home on, but you need an RV in the meantime, 
If you are setting an RV up on some land, some things that you're gonna need to think about are how are you gonna get electric and water to your RV, plus you're going to need a place for the tanks to be dumped into. So you're gonna be looking at contacting an electrician to get electric set up on your property. You're gonna need either a 50 amp or a 30 amp electrical service connection there. And then you're also going to need some sort of septic tank in most instances to hook the sewage drains to so you can drain your gray and black tanks from your RV. So this is gonna be water from the toilet and shower and sinks and things like that so that they don't just collect in the tanks underneath the RV, they actually have a place to drain without you having to transport it somewhere. Or maybe if you're just gonna be traveling around most of the time, then you can go to dump stations that are around the country that are, there are so many different dump stations all over the place where you can take your RV to and you can dump your black and gray tanks to for five or $10 or whatever their charge may be. So those are some couple different instances of what to think about where you may put the RV. And then finally is gonna be transporting the RV, which is closely directed with this or correlated to this where one, you're gonna need a truck to pull it yourself if that's the route where you wanna go, where you're you know, either have or looking for the truck to pull the type of RV that you want. And we'll get into that more when we look at some different popular RV models that people are living in. What kind of truck would it take to pull that? Or you can get an RV delivered. So RV transportation drivers are typically somewhere around 250 to $3 a mile to transport an RV. And that is something that is available as well. So if you are looking at an RV here in Texas, say at my dealership where I'm at, but you live in a whole other state, usually a transport driver can take it to you there for about $2.50 to $3 a mile. And that is something that can be done. So you don't have to have a vehicle to tow the RV. You can just have it delivered wherever you need it to go. And last on this list, we're gonna have service and expectations. So this is kind of a big umbrella that there is a lot that can be talked about, but I'm gonna to try to go through it as quickly as possible. An RV is not a home. So do not expect it to function like a home. Do not expect it to hold up like a home. I'm just being completely honest with y'all. That is what an RV is. I tell every single one of my customers, they only make two types of RVs, ones that are broken and ones that will be broken. And it's just the truth. If you have an RV, you're probably going to have to take it into service or have it looked at for service at least two to four times a year. My family's had seven RVs over the past 15 years and that has been the case with pretty much every RV that we have. I mean, you're basically taking a home and driving it down the road going 50, 60 miles an hour and things shake around and move. So stuff is going to happen. But with all that being said, I do have a lot of stuff in place where I'm at to make sure my customers that are living in an RV have a great experience. One big thing is that my service manager, she gives her personal cell phone number out to every single one of my customers. I also give my personal cell phone number out to every single one of my customers as well. So very easily accessible if you have any sort of issues that need to be taken care of. Then another really big thing that I do here at my location and that is really unique to us because there's not many RV dealerships around the country that do this is I have a campground here on my facility. So we're gonna see that here in just a second where I have eight different spots with full electrical and water hookups here on my lot that my customers that buy an RV for me can stay in for free. So if you buy an RV for me here in Dallas, you can actually set up your RV back here in this space and you can use it for a few days before you actually take it home to start living in as your home. So you can make sure everything works, make sure you know how to do everything. And if something doesn't work or you don't know how to do something, we're right here to help take care of you. And then in addition to that, if you do ever need to bring it back here to my Dallas location for service, you don't have to get a hotel to stay in while your RV is being worked on. You can actually set it up back here in our campground and you can still live in it. And we can work on your RV during the day. You can stay in it at night and you can still live in the RV while you're getting service work done on it as well. Then there's a couple other things that we do. So we have for our customers that are living in an RV, we have trip interruption service. So if you have any sort of emergency that is preventing you from being able to use the RV properly, like AC not working or refrigerator not working, or you have a water leak, anything like that, we're gonna be able to get you in the front of the line at our service department if you are using your RV and that is preventing you from being able to use it. So you won't have to wait behind anybody. We're gonna get it looked at right away. And then we are also a priority RV network dealer. So we have about 130 different dealerships across the United States that also offer that tri trip interruption service. So if you are more than 100 miles away from your home traveling and you have any sort of issue that is preventing you from being able to use the RV, any one of these 130 different dealerships across the United States are going to be able to get you in the front of the line at their service departments to try to get that issue taken care of for you so you can get back to living in your RV properly. 
And if you're looking to buy an RV from somewhere other than myself and my dealership, I totally understand that. I know not everybody can come here to Dallas to buy an RV from me, and that's perfectly fine. But make sure to ask them questions about their service department and what their service policies look like so you know what to expect because every service department is going to be different. And some dealerships are faster than others. Some dealerships have more service base than others. And where a lot of people end up having a negative experience with an RV is having unmet expectations on how quickly they expect service work to get done. So make sure you know up front what that process is gonna look like because some dealerships do take two to three months to get your RV back to you when you bring it in for service work, which could mean two to three months of staying in a hotel while they have possession of your RV that you're paying for. So make sure that you are very clear on wanting to know what their service policies look like and what your service experience is going to look like when something does go wrong and you have to bring it in for service. So those are different things to think about in regards to service and your RV. Now let's get to the fun stuff. We're going to talk about some of the more popular RV styles and models that people are looking to live in full time. And we're going to go through some of the pricing information about them, vehicles needed to tow them and things like that. Just keep in mind here, I am going to have pricing information with financing options pop up on the screen here. Now this is all subject to your particular credit situation. So these are all just calculated national averages and it can vary depending on what your particular credit situation is and the down payment amount that you choose to put down. But these are just showing kind of a generic scenario here. So we're gonna look through some different models of different types of RVs. So first, we are gonna start out with a 2022 Dutchman Colorado 24 BHC. This is gonna be an aluminum sided RV, so more of an entry level RV, but I've definitely seen people live out of these full time. This one here is going to have a bunk bed on the inside and no slide out, so very, very easy to get into. It's gonna be something that'll give you comfortable seating space, a separated bed with a privacy screen, and then you also have a full bathroom in here as well. So this is gonna be kind of more your entry level RV that you still could live in if you wanna live in something like that. And then as you can see from Colorado here, there are various different floor plans that they have available from this brand, which is gonna be the same with every brand we look at. Next is gonna be a 2022 Keystone Passport 229 RK. This is gonna be more of a couple style RV with no bunk beds in it. And this one is one that I really like actually. It's around $35,000. And again, this is also something to think about with price. These prices are always changing. So the price that is on the screen here, it's just a rough estimate. And even a month from now, these prices could be totally different as well. But coming inside here, you have a slide out, some more floor space. You can see you have a nice rear kitchen here. And this is gonna be a pretty lightweight RV at only 5,250 pounds. So a lot of different vehicles that can tow this. And if you're pretty minimalistic, this is something you could comfortably live in, although it is gonna be a little limited on space. And we're gonna keep getting to bigger RVs as we keep going. But you do have a residential queen size bed in there as well. Also on the Passport, you have slam latch doors, which is pretty unique for the price point. And then all of your RVs, as far as travel trailers go, like these Passports here, are all gonna have these pass-through storage compartments for the most part. And then we're gonna go to the Bullet 291 RLS. So this is gonna start getting a little bit bigger here. This one has a super wide storage compartment up front. So tons of space there. You have a slide out 200 watt solar panel on the roof and this one has two ACs. Two ACs is something you're gonna wanna look for if you're in hotter climates and you're getting into bigger size RVs. So this one does have those two ACs. You're going to have a really nice arrangement in here. I'm a big fan of it. Big windows all the way around plus your recliners on the back wall there. And then this one is only about 6,100 pounds. So pretty much any half ton truck for the most part is gonna be able to tow this, but you will need a half ton truck and up to be able to tow something like this or a larger SUV. So that's something to keep in mind. Really love the wall to wall bathroom here that gives you so much more additional storage. This would be great for living in full time because you can be somewhat limited in travel trailers like what we're looking at here with wardrobe storage. You can see you just have limited storage around the bed there for wardrobe but those extra cabinets in the bathroom are going to significantly help in that bullet floor plan there this is a keystone springdale 303 bh you can see i have the outdoor kitchen there and then this one is going to be a bunkhouse model with a separated bedroom it's going to be an aluminum sided rv with wooden framing the previous two that we looked at were fiberglass sided rvs with aluminum framing so a little bit different there in the construction but I've seen quite a few people living out of this floor plan here because of the separated bedroom and the price point that this comes in at being right around $41,000 or so. And as you go to the back here, you're gonna see you have a pantry space there and then you're going to have your bathroom in between here. It is just a one bath in this floor plan, but still 
pretty much everything you need to be able to live in it and you're going to have a separated bunk room when we get to the back so as we go towards this back part of the rv a whole separate door there that will slide closed and giving you this privacy space for any additional kids or family that you have that may be staying back here you do have a fold out sort of bed that would go across the floor there with how it is laid out and then you also have dinette tables and sofas that'll make into a bed next we're going to move up in the tiers of quality i guess you could say and this is a bullet premier 34 bipr so this is going to be an island kitchen bunkhouse travel trailer this is going to be quite a bit heavier because you now have two slide outs in this living area making room for the island kitchen and you have a slide out in the bunkhouse as well so three slide outs in total on this rv definitely stepping up in quality this is going to have two acs on it as well and this is going to be around fifty-eight thousand dollars. This weighs about 7,600 pounds, so it's going to be looking at pretty much most of the half-ton trucks are going to be able to tow that, but you're going to need a more modern half-ton truck, and anything larger than a half-ton truck will definitely be able to handle that load. Next, we're going to have the Sprinter 320 MLS. This is one of my favorite couples travel trailers for full-time living. It has a really, really unique, very special rear kitchen off the back wall here that is just unlike a lot of other things you'll see and that there was about 8800 pounds so now you're looking at about a three quarter ton truck to be able to tow something like that same with this outback 341 rd as well this is going to require a three quarter ton truck being at about 8500 pounds to tow this um, some people with really modern half ton trucks that have up to that 12 13 000 pound towing capacity will insist that they can tow something this big with a half ton truck but i would definitely recommend a three quarter ton truck this Outback here is the only one we've looked at so far that has a tankless on-demand water heater. So you're going to have pretty much unlimited hot water. And then you have a king size bed in here as well. You're going to have washer dryer connections in this one also. So that's something that is very rare and hard to find in a travel trailer. But that Outback 340RD has it. And then we have all our pre-owned RVs along this back fence line. I'm not going to show any of those because those literally change every single day. We get pre-owned RVs in when somebody decides to come in and trade an RV for a new RV and literally every day those change. So that's something that you can look at though. If you're interested in pre-owned RVs, you can see what available inventory is there when you're ready to go. This is a Gulfstream Conquest 6250D. This is a gas class C motorhome. So this is gonna be a couple style motorhome. And motorhomes are gonna be great if you're looking to do more consistent long distance travel. So these are gonna be options. And I only showed a limited amount of motorhomes in this video because I have just a limited amount on my lot at the moment but there are class c class b motorhomes as well so this is a class c motorhome then this class b motorhome here this is like a van that's going to be a thor scope this one here is right around a hundred thousand it's also a gas class b motorhome but they also make these and the class c's and diesel and then there are class a motorhomes as well i don't have any on my lot at the moment so i didn't show any but class a motorhomes they can vary so drastically that's almost a whole other animal to dive into with class a motorhomes and super c motorhomes so i'm going to leave those out of the video but we're going to jump to the fifth wheels here where this is a cougar 23 mls this here is only $52,000 and it's super lightweight. It's 7,150 pounds. So a lot of half ton trucks are actually going to be able to tow something like this Cougar 23 MLS. This is definitely more of a couple style floor plan here. Nice bathroom space that you have in here for the size fifth wheel that it is. A seat in there. And your fifth wheels are always going to have a taller ceiling, bigger storage compartments, and things like that than the travel trailers that we looked at before. Also have a slide out in the bedroom for wardrobe space in there as well and it'll have a residential queen size bed then we go to the sprinter 32 bh so this is going to be a 10,000 pound bunkhouse fifth wheel but this thing is under sixty thousand dollars and to get all this space in a fifth wheel for under sixty thousand dollars this is a huge bargain this thing is also a hundred inches wide so it's four inches wider than a standard fifth wheel that sits at 96 inches wide has a big bunk room here in the back and it is a bath and a half fifth wheel so you actually have a half bath back here which you could imagine if you're living in it full time would be huge for the company that is back there in the bunk room whether it be kids or family or whatever it is and then going up to the front you have a pass-through bathroom here for the main bathroom you have a porcelain toilet in there and then you're going to have a residential queen size bed in the bedroom so that one there is a absolute deal for a brand new rv under being under sixty thousand dollars then we're going to go to the cougar 316 rls cougar is one of my favorite mid-profile fifth wheels it's actually my favorite mid-profile fifth wheel which is why my family has a cougar 364 bhl but this here is more of a couple style cougar floor plan what i really like about this first of all cougar has 
the next step up in equipment compared to like the Sprinter we looked at where they have a touchscreen control panel to control the RV and they're going to have 12 volt heat pads on all the water tanks. So you have an electric heat source on the water tanks to make sure and keep those warm. That's gonna be great if you're traveling in below freezing temperatures with water in the tanks. But really love that they have a dual sink bathroom, so lots of room in there. And they have an east to west facing bed in the bedroom with washer dryer hookups in here as well. So this one comes in at about $78,000 or so, somewhere around that range. And absolutely love this floor plan for a couple. Next, we're going to go to the Montana High Country. This is the Montana 335BH. And when coming here, this is going to be a really unique model because it's only 37 feet long, but it has a slide out that goes out the back wall. So that's going to make room for the bunks. Plus, you have a loft in here. It is more of a shallow loft, so it's really just for laying down up there. But then underneath the loft, you have two bunk beds back here and a half bath. So again, this is another bath and a half bunkhouse model. And it's under 40 feet, only weighs about 12,400 pounds. So any three quarter ton truck is going to be able to pull this with pretty much no issues. Definitely any three quarter ton diesel truck. Also have a windshield in there for nice views in the bedroom as well. Then we go to the Montana 377 FL. So this is again another Montana high country. This has a front living floor plan with a loft. You have two entrances. So you actually have an opposing campsite entrance to get directly to the bathroom there. And you have a loft over the bedroom. This one is going to have a much bigger loft than the last one. So much more ceiling height in there. And then you have the master bedroom down below it where you also have hookups for a combo washer dryer unit as well. Then we're gonna go to the Montana 3121 RL. Montana has two different lines and they have Montana and Montana High Country. The Montana is the big brother. So this is going to have a much more elegant finish than the Montana High Country. The 3121 RL is Montana's most popular floor plan. It's gonna be the standard couples floor plan that you see in pretty much every fifth wheel brand out there. But Montana does such a good job with how they build it. It's a really beautiful, elegant looking piece of camping equipment or housing equipment now, just looking at how people are using the RVs and you're gonna have washer dryer hookups in the bedroom and everything you need to live in that full time comfortably. Then we're gonna go to the Alpine here. So this is a Keystone Alpine 3790FK. This is a front kitchen model, so very unique and definitely stands out. A huge kitchen up front here, and this thing is right around 105 to maybe 110. And you can see the financing terms there. With about 18,000 down, you'd be at around 782 a month. So, but those can fluctuate a little bit. This thing here is 13,600 pounds, so you're definitely gonna be looking at at least a three quarter ton truck and preferably a diesel to pull something like this. And then look at the shower in here. You have a, rect or not a rectangular, sorry, a square shower, which is so unique. Only Alpine does this. This is a huge shower that is 48 inches by 48 inches. Absolutely massive. And you have washer dryer connections in the cabinet there next to the bathroom. Then this is the Alpine 3910RK. So this is the rear kitchen Alpine model. Really love this for all the floor space that's in here. Plus you have a half bath here and the washer dryer connections are in the half bath. So they don't take up any wardrobe space. You're gonna have a pass through bathroom. And then one thing to really point out with the Alpine brand here is this Alpine brand has a tankless on-demand water heater as well. Then we're gonna go to the most popular full-time living RV in the country right now. This is the Keystone Avalanche 390DS. This is a tr true two bedroom, two bathroom fifth wheel with the biggest loft you'll see in any RV in the market right now. This thing is 33 inches tall. So pretty much anybody under 5'10 can sit up straight in that loft. It's absolutely giant. You have a full size bed here in the back bedroom area and a full bathroom and that is just the start of it you are still going to have a whole second bedroom and bathroom in here. And this thing is at 105, it's about 1400, sorry, $105,000 I should specify. And then you're at 14,200 pounds. So definitely gonna be looking at at least a three quarter ton truck diesel to pull something like this and preferably a one ton if you can do it. But you also have washer dryer hookups in here and this thing is by far the most popular RV that people are looking to live in. Then you have pre-owned RVs like those ones there. So those are again gonna fluctuate. Then you have your toy hauler. So this is a Keystone Raptor 352. This is gonna have a 10 foot garage. It's a dual axle toy hauler. This is right at about $108,000. It's 14,250 pounds. So again, gonna be looking at at least a three quarter ton truck like a 250 or a 2500, preferably a diesel to pull something like this. Then you have the Raptor 429 here, which this is a much bigger fifth wheel toy hauler. That's about 45 feet. You have the patio off the back. This thing is 16,000 pounds. 
So you're definitely going to be looking at more like a one ton truck, like a 350 or 3500 for something this size. These are what people get if they want the extra sleeping capacity in the back with those beds that you saw that they can be made out or if you have toys that you want to bring along with you. Next is this full body paint Fusion 430. This thing is going to be right around $140,000. It is 16,000 pounds as well, so you're going to want a um, one ton truck for something like this. You can see then here a carbon 398. This has a 17 foot garage. This thing has eight potential beds back here and has a second full bathroom, so two full bathrooms. This is a really unique model if you're looking for the max sleeping capacity and it's something that is really special in the RV community. All right, y'all, so that's pretty much all I got. Hopefully you got something beneficial out of this video. If you did, hit the like button down below and definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because if you don't know, on this channel, I typically walk through these RVs and do very thorough walkthroughs of them and all the equipment that's on them. So if you wanna go check those out, you can on my page as well. And then keep in mind, I am in a sales position. So all of these RVs you saw here are all available and for sale. So if you are interested in one, you can text me at the number on the screen there. And I would love to help you out, get you all the information that you need and whatnot to help you make this RV yours if that's what you wanna do. So I'm here for you for that. And then if there's anything that I missed, any other additional information y'all have, add it down below in the comments. If there's any other questions you have, go down into that comment section as well. And that's all I got for y'all. Until next time, I'll see you out camping.